Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Magical Mischief Tour. Today we're going to continue on with our magical adventures. And I hope at some point to be able to get into the nether, uh, hopefully this episode. If not, then it'll probably be the next. But I was doing a little bit of cleanup over here, and I've, I've got a lot of books. Um, I kind of piled them all over here. I, th I think it's supplementaries. Yeah, that adds in the ability to just place books in world like this. Uh, if you break, you know, a pile, they just come back and you can put them down wherever you like, which is just really cool. It, it's a neat feature. Uh, so if you don't have a way of storing them, you can always just stack your books. Um, but I, I also added in a second floor. The, this entire ceiling is made of barrels, but uh, for two reasons. One, because I now have storage by clicking on the floor, but uh, alternately, I now have an enchanting area. And yes, the, the roof is still under... Uh, repair. I'm going to need to get that fixed. I need to get somebody out here. I also found some globes. I did a little bit of uh, flying around and exploring some shipwrecks and stuff. Looking on my map, you can see that I've been a few places. You know, I even found a little something over here that uh, maybe we can go explore at some point. I think that would be a lot of fun. But th this is the site of my future enchanting altar, uh, and not just a regular enchanter. Um, I'm looking to make something a little bit special with Eidolon. We're going to need to be making a soul enchanter because I've been getting levels and occasionally dying here and there, and I need to get I need to get some of those actually used. <laughs> so let's start off with this: a little bit of Eidolon, and uh, along the way, I'm sure you'll catch up with some of the things I did a little bit in between episodes. Not too much though, just just mundane things. So I've got this little setup here that looks a little bit more immersive with the pot being kind of kind of suspended here. I'm using just regular sticks with supplementaries. You can actually place a stick, which I think is kind of neat. And with wall jump being in here, I can just hop up here easy enough and deposit things in. Now, I've actually already made a bunch of arcane gold in uh, like an much earlier episodes. So I'm just going to be using those. And you can see here four of the arcane gold ingots makes the gold inlay, which should work pretty good. And there we go, just a little bit of ingredients. I got some obsidian, and uh, earlier I've got plenty of books. And of course, I've uh, been harvesting a bit of diamonds as well as finding them with those shipwrecks. So I now have a soul enchanter. And I will come clean and say, I've actually never used one before. So I have no idea how it actually works. I just know that it is used to add enchantments to enchanted items already. Looks like it needs soul gems, though or soul shards, which actually I've got plenty now that I'm looking at my uh, inventory. So let's put this in here and let's try enchanting something that can be enchanted. I don't want to use the Tetra tool. Oh, they do work. There we go. All right. Looting, smite. That's pretty good. All right. I put this on here. Unbreaking sharpness, pain of, <laughs> pain of crappy pods. No, I don't want that either. How about the shield? Can I put that in? It even works with that. Nice. And I'm sure you notice that each one uses one level and is actually only like the level one version of it. I don't think that's because of the level that I am. I think like if I put sharpness on here, let's see, 8.25, we'll do that, 9.35. And you can see sharpness one is here again. Oh my gosh, uh, that didn't work. I still have sharpness one. I don't know if that actually changes it or anything. Looting. Looting would be nice. So sharpness one, looting one, and oh boy, that durability on there. I don't know if this is actually um, enchanted properly because it's not using the um, the usual Tetra method. Oh, smite, bane of arthropod, looting two. Okay, so let's put this in here. Can I actually put that on there? No, I can't. All right. Uh, I think it's because it might have reached its magical maximum being a Tetra tool. So let's go inspect that. All right, we'll put this in here and let's take a look. Right now, strangely, the magic capacity bar does not show up unless I highlight some kind of magic item, in which case then it does show the magic capacity is quite high, actually, and we have not reached it. So I think it's just a matter of me not knowing exactly what I'm doing with this thing yet. But it's something that I, I'm probably going to end up learning in the future. Uh, now, I could put this on here. Actually, why not, right? It'll take me two levels. It'll be uh, Sharpness 2, Looting 1. There we go. Wow, that was pretty easy. All right, so I've, I've got this now, and <laughs> I look forward to updating other stuff. Let's see. Oh, this uh, this lion hide and these amethyst boots. Um, Maybe? I mean, I don't have a lot of levels on me, but let me take these off. 
and see if I can just get some regular old enchants on there. I'll take protection one on there. Why not, right? Oh, chicken jump. Oh, that's really cool. If you haven't uh, obtained any kind of um, flight mechanic yet, uh, or your you know damage reduction from falling, chicken jump is excellent. It just gives you kind of a slow fall effect as if I had the wings on for when I'm just falling. So that's just really cool in general. Oh my gosh, I've got projectile protection and protection on there. Oh, okay, this is really interesting. I'm almost out of levels as well. I'm just like, oh, cool, in interesting stuff. Unbreaking. So now that I know that, though, I could stack other things? I don't know what unusing is, but I think, I think I'm good because I'm pretty much out of levels. So I've got some projectile protection, a little bit of regular protection, um, on some of these, a little bit of fire protection and some mana boost, even though I'm not using Ars Nouveau. But I, I'm pretty happy with this. This turned out pretty good. I'm keeping diamonds on me at all times now, just in case I want to crystallize something and bring it with me. Um, but I also have a compass, and there's a reason for that. That's to make one of these, a nature's compass, which is very beneficial. Using it, you can actually type in a biome that you're looking for, just right-clicking. And you type up here in the search bar, and uh, let's say I want to find a desert. Then I can click just a few words, click here, and then you could double click it, and it will just automatically search. And on the top left, it says status found, biome desert. Then it lists the coordinates and the distance, and it will point on here the direction that you can go, even if it's on your hotbar. So you don't even need to be holding it. We've got about 1,000 blocks in that direction is the nearest desert, which as you can see is up there pretty darn cool and very useful in general. It's something that I've been wanting to have on me for some time and I think I keep on forgetting about it. So <laughs> done. And now I remember exactly why I wanted that compass because I want some cookies. I, I actually have cookies but I'm going to need them for something else as well. Uh, the gluttony charm is something that I've been wanting to make for some time. There we go, one gluttony charm. And this will actually go into one of my slots over here. I don't know if I have an open spot. There we go, oh I do. Okay, there we are, pendant. So now when I eat things, you have to be careful with things like golden apples. When I eat things, it's almost instant. So if you're on a server or you've got some kind of lag going on or anything like that, it's especially helpful. But in the middle of battles as well, it's really nice to just go numb. And you're done. You don't have to like nom 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 and while you're running around. So <laughs> highly recommend. But I will need coca beans and some jungle uh, like wood. So let's grab this compass and look for a jungle. Now we've got several actually to choose from. The UAD ones are all in a different dimension. So don't 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 think that that's something that we're looking for here. We could look for a jungle or a bamboo jungle. And honestly, I think either one will do. Uh, I'm just gonna find out which one is closer. So I've got a plan. Uh, we're going to head over in this direction, which I think is like a thousand blocks away, maybe, maybe 1500, which is about half the distance of where I want to go to get those jungle planks. And I, I might go, you know, way out here to get to those jungles because both of them are over there. And um, we can uh, grab a little something along the way. All right. So as you can see, my marker here is bringing me into one of these Feywild biomes. And we are going to turn that off and approach gently this group of bee knights. Yes, this is something that I came across while I was out here. There is gold if you want to mine it up, but I have no idea if they're going to be uh, attacking me or not. Hello. You are unworthy of our respect. Tread. Thread carefully. Okay, I will thread carefully. <laughs> but there, there's this sacred honeycomb. If I take this, will you guys... Uh oh Yes, yes, you will attack me. Okay, let's let's continue on. We need to get out of here. <laughs> I don't want to get attacked by bee knights. They look very upset and super cute. Oh my gosh. Look at this group. Oh, I, I feel bad, you know? Like, they're all just kind of like coming at me. <laughs> and as much as I want to just kind of steal this stuff, I can't take it without breaking it. And I don't want to break it. Because I think I can take this display for the golden honeycomb. So I think we'll come back in the future. Um, because we, we have not made friends with any of the uh, the fays, the, the pixies as of yet. So I'm going to continue on looking for that for that uh, jungle. And uh, I'll, I'll come back to you once we get there. And here I think we finally made it to the jungle. 
and the first thing I see is cocoa beans, which is just what I'm looking for. So <laughs> this works, and of course a little bit of wood. Now I do have a couple of uh, trinkets on me, one of which allows me to harvest things really quick. So I'm sure you noticed I was able to harvest that rather quickly with just my bare hands. It's kind of nice, uh, and I got minimum amount of cocoa beans that I need. Uh, so I think this is all I actually came for, and I'm I'm just gonna head out. And of course, silly me, I keep forgetting I have a recall amulet, which I think I'm going to use. There we go, back at bed. Oh, and it's nighttime, so let's just do a sleep. I think maybe over here, because I don't think that I actually have a uh, a setup for cocoa beans yet. Uh, and to start with, I think I'm just gonna. Put all four there and then I'll just start layering around on this and that, that should be more than enough. Uh, it's mostly for the brown dye because it's a really easy thing but uh, there are some crafting recipes I'll need those for in the future. Oh something else you probably might have noticed I do have kitty slippers. Uh, yeah when I when I sneak for some reason they just kind of go into stealth mode there but um, they're really really beneficial. I've found several sets of uh, footwear for curios but these ones uh, creepers will avoid you and the best benefit when you take damage, um, you make cat noises. <laughs> just, just kind of entertaining in general. Anyway, um, I know that I've been putting off going to the nether for some time, and I think that maybe we do that uh, just as an added precaution, because I know my recall amulet I just used and it takes a while for it to recharge. Um, or perhaps it just has a durability, I don't know. I, I am bringing my ender feather charm just in case. So I can teleport back if uh, things get really, really hairy there. I'm enchanted up. I feel like I'm ready to go to the nether. So let me show you a little something that I found. Uh, there was a really special thing uh, while I was messing around. And yes, I, I did build the stairway down here now because I feel that after what I found, it definitely needs to happen. Um, we're going to be working with man and artifice, but at the same time, we found a little shortcut for astral sorcery. I was using this to just use my break spell originally to get a bunch of uh, cobblestone and stuff as well as other materials. So in the process of doing so, let's see if I can actually uh, somewhat fly down here. It's a little bit tricky to do. There we go. Close enough. When I got down to this level, it actually opened up. And yes, I lit it up and I put walls around the outside. I left the waterfall because that's just really pretty. And I figured, all right, let's turn this into an earth moat transmutation area. This makes a lot of sense. It needs to be down by um, bedrock anyway, and we're at like Y level 8, so I think that this is really appropriate. Um, and I was like, all right, well, yeah, it, it, ouch, I just ran into something. Uh, the, uh, the stuff just kind of goes back here, but while I was clearing this out, let me show you what else I found. Let's see, I open these up. It's not the bat. It's um, a secret astral sorcery liquid pools and it's actually just like right below my base now here's the funny thing about this when you've got this in this much area there isn't enough here to, for it to be infinite but it's more than enough for me to get i don't know feeling a bit uh well off with astral sorcery i'm walking around in it like the like there's no liquid here so it's just like an air block in when you're running around in it you notice i'm not even like there's no air bubbles or anything like that so that is kind of cool but you also of course get night vision on this which is just a really nice added benefit so this was just a nice find and because it, it glows you know that i've got the night vision effect going on but as it since it glows i didn't want to remove that functionality to it i wanted to be able to see the the cabin or the uh, the cave glowing in the distance like it is here so i just thought that was really cool i'm happy that i was able to find something like that i, I really wanted to so i could show people that that those are rarely uh, around in the world, <laughs> and I happened to find one on my random uh, mining expedition to get down towards bedrock. I remembered the other thing now. While I was over in this corner, I found this. And you probably say, Valen, that's, that's just a piece of netherrack. This is the first sign of getting into the nether. So the um, reason that is, is if you look on the mini-map in the top left, you'll see some purple that is actually the the portal and i can hear one just in this direction okay oh there's there's all sorts of mobs in here which is not a good thing uh okay oh shoot 
Get poisoned. <laughs> Hello. We got some fun fun times here to be had. Let me see if there's anything else coming this way. Yep, there is. Get out of here. Stop hitting me or I'll meow at you. Uh, there's also some creepers. Let's switch this to projectiles. There we go. The dead. <laughs> and that took up most of my mana just doing that, but here we go. This is open though. Here's the problem. Um, any mobs that have gone through here <laughs> are probably going to be on the other side. <laughs> so I'm going to take this. Uh, actually, I might put that potion of healing on my hotbar. <laughs> um, and we'll see how this goes. I, I've got a little bit of copper ore from this. All right, so there we go. I am uh, recharged, full, and ready to go. We're going to go into the nether. But the, this is the thing. You need to find these in the world. You cannot just make them. But you can get a bucket and bucket this stuff and use it to get into the nether, um, which can be helpful. I, the fact that this is actually close and at the end of my uh, my area there, that I'm, I'm happy with that. So if you try and light a nether portal, it's not going to work. This is the only way into the nether that I'm aware of. So let's do this. It doesn't happen quickly. You actually have to submerge yourself. Okay. This is not good. This is not good. There's a creeper. There's tons of baddies in here with me. There we go. Take take your damage. Hello. Ne the creepers are not going off because of my my shoes, which is a good thing. <laughs> but I feel like we're a little too crowded in here. Look at all these bats. Dear Lord. Okay. Everything must go. Oh, whew. I think I'm I think I'm actually just going to mine through here. Gosh, that spell or that uh, ability that I have, man, to just mine things quickly. It's a little a little too quick. And I hear a ghast as well. Okay, so looking on the mini map, it looks like I'm actually mining a little too high. So let's see about going down into this area there we go oh oh that's a bit much okay well look at this map i don't know why it's like loaded in weird areas like this but this is a pretty interesting place that's cool i can get some blaze parts here maybe that would be nice um but what we're looking for in order to get back normally if you don't have like a recall recall charm or something like that is an altar that will have some kind of beacon in the center and you'll have to surround it with gold blocks which i forgot completely to bring gold so i'm gonna have to mine some while i'm here but um otherwise you can just use the different recall options that i've shown you so far all right i see stuff flying around down there and that kind of spooks me out a little bit let's go up here i just saw something flying there what is that and is it is it on a broom or something? Dude, I don't want to kill it that far out. If it if it has a good drop, I might want it. It actually doesn't seem to care about me whatsoever. And I do see lots of magma slimes too. That could be useful. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to gather up a bunch of these materials. I mean, this is why I'm here, is to get uh, materials from the nether as it is. Really cool surroundings. We came out in a really interesting spot. Yeah, just as I thought, my break spell doesn't work on the nether quartz, so it's a good thing that I've got my uh, pick at the very least. Well, this is the first I've seen any red geodes. I'm sure that they're probably only exclusive to the nether, but yeah, I'm seeing more over there. So I'm going to fly around in here a bit, gather a bunch of gold and quartz, uh, maybe some of these red geodes as well. I'll be back shortly. Oh, hello, pupper. What what are you? You are an Orthus. Okay. I'm sure that by killing you will probably piss off Hades. And you know what? I'm okay with that because you're trying to burn me and I don't want to be burned. No drops? Aw. Ooh, ooh, I didn't know it'd shoot lightning bolts. Okay, 
That's interesting. Ow! Oh. And it dropped Mark of the Nether. Oh, okay. What the heck is that? Little glowing demon dudes? Oh, this is probably the the demon minions. That's not though. I want you to stay away. You you stay away from me. <laughs> she saw me. All right, back to mining stuff. What the heck? Oh my gosh, you are adorably terrifying. <laughs> Look at this guy. Hostile sporling. Oh, with a little chompy mouth. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, but we're gonna have to put an end to you and your piglin friend. What are you? Oh, you're one of the those nether um, goblins. Nice. Hello. What do you have for sale? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Okay. A spawner with of zombified piglins. Oh my gosh. And look at all this stuff. Um, yeah. Even gold items, which could be useful, uh, especially in certain areas in here. Time to do some looting. And another spawner area. This time with some skulls. Oh, nice. All right, I will definitely take these. That'll be uh, very beneficial for some occultism later on. Okay, so I just found this relic, and it is really, really good. With fire resistance, 8 armor, and 7 strength bonus. <laughs> and I currently have this one that just gives me an extra level of looting, which I do like that. But seriously, the amount of survivability this gives me, especially here, is really, really good. So I think I'm going to do that. Speaking of, I've got four more skill points. I'm putting them all in strength because this gives me some more armor and some more melee attack damage. And yeah, I'll take that. Okay, so I have found some of these uh, structures here. And they look like your normal ones, but I think they might be affected by Young's. A terrible fortress, yes into another fortress. Oh, there's a skeleton. Really? You just get get dead. All of you. Ow! Oh, when I see a blaze spawner, this is just what I was looking for. And in fact, I see blazes, and they're on both sides of me. <laughs> okay. There we go. I get my first blaze rod. Nice. And and what kind of biome is this? This looks crazy. Look at all the quartz everywhere. Ow, okay. Yeah, that's, that's dangerous stuff, but I mean, nether quartz is no longer an issue. Holy cow. Uh, getting a really good view up here, you can see that there's... Oh! Oh! That it's really pretty, is what I was going to say, but look at this! This is what I was looking for! This is technically the way out. Uh, though it is apparently surrounded with bad guys here. Get out of here. Oh, and you brought friends? Gosh. All right, let me clear the area first, and then I'll show you guys. All right, so this is a beacon. And with it, if you put down some gold, because I've been mining a bunch of that, here and here, there we go. And then it pushes you up, and uh, it basically teleports you if you stay in that beam long enough. And... I don't know where you'll end up back at home, but I'm going to put a marker here so that I know that it's here in case I don't want or need to teleport with my uh, in backpack items. Oh boy, okay, a wildfire. I was not anticipating this. Oh gosh, okay. I got fortunate and it was trapped and could not escape. Oh, and it drops some good stuff. Uh, let's get rid of this. Shattered Blaze piece. Nice! Which can be used to make wildfire shield parts. Which... Oh! It's some of the diamond DNA sampler uh, ingredients. Okay, this is really, really good news. Uh, but I'm being attacked, so I need to make sure I don't die in the process of getting out of here. <laughs> hey! I found hope! Or at least a hope mushroom. One thing is I don't I don't really have much for any space in my inventory anymore. I guess I can get rid of that mark in the nether. This is one of the things we're going to need for uh, getting into another dimension and potentially to a better uh, you know DNA sampler. That's with the rainbow ore. So I'm going to take a few of these now that I've found these. I just need the black mushrooms. Um, I can't remember what they're called. Despair mushrooms, that's it. I'm gonna need to get some of those. And they're just little black mushrooms, just like those ones, but, you know, black. And uh, then combining those with a bed, I think we can get into another dimension. 
and get a bunch of ore for making more DNA samplers. Or at least of a higher tier. Wow, some of these places are just really impressive to see the biomes of. Look at all these shroom lights as well. Gosh, it's so pretty. Uh, even though it is like, you know, the nether. This is different. All right, I was just looking for some dark mushrooms, but hey, it seems I found some kind of outpost. Um, it seems like a pillager outpost, but it's filled with... Oh boy, a lot more trouble than I anticipated. Not to worry, I have my trusty new stuff and gear helping me out with the fire resist as well as damage mitigation. But uh, let's see what's at the top. A lot of highly enchanted stone swords, which could be useful in the proper uh, setup, but I don't really have that set up. Ooh, bottles of enchanting. That's actually pretty darn useful. I actually have some at home because I've been trading with a cleric that was uh, expert level, but it's still valuable to have more of them. So anyway, uh, I was thinking I would keep looking around until I found some black mushrooms, um, the despair mushrooms, but I don't think I'm going to get that lucky. Uh, I think I'm just going to end up having to come back for those in the future. So here's another tip. As I just found another one of these really close to home, I'm going to mark it and activate it. But you could mine this up and make your own. I think it just needs to have gold on the four sides. It doesn't need to have the, the terracotta or anything like that. So let's jump in and uh, see where this one takes me. And yes, it will push you up in the air, so don't freak out. There we go, and I am in the underground. Where where the heck am I? This is a new spot. This is not the spot that I left with. Alright, time to teleport back before things get a little too crazy. Alright, I'm back. And you probably noticed my shoes have changed because I got a little bit faster uh, set. I opted to use these instead of the creeper ones because I like, I like to move fast. And while I'm doing this, I also have step assist so I can walk up uh, single block surfaces very easily while running. It's pretty nice. Uh, but I got a ton of loot and not just here. I also got all this stuff here, which any of these music discs uh, plus iron I can turn into discus and get some money for. Not a lot, but at least something. Um, so I've got so much to sort through. I think that this will be good. Uh, another adventure was was a lot of fun, a little bit of enchanting. And uh, I think next time we're going to take a lot of these ingredients and put them into good use and get into some really good stuff, a lot more magic. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, come visit us on Twitch, click the notification bell. And until next time, I'll see you.